Thank you again for coming tonight, and this is a great program with Cook County Hospital. I'm Lynn Osmond, President and CEO of the Chicago Architecture Center. And you know, it's great to see this architecture wonder, this legacy of Cook County Hospital um, come back. And it's been over five years in the making, and I really uh, applaud our speakers here tonight that are going to tell you more about it. You know, this has really been a story about perseverance, and we can start, of course, with Landmarks Illinois. Bonnie McDonald, then we can go with Joanne Tunovich, who was passionate about the project. We can talk about Cook County President uh, Tony Preckwinkle, who wouldn't let this go, and uh, Jessica Caffrey and her work on it. The strategic uh, direction by um, Tim Brangle and the Chicago Consultant Studios, they all helped. And then, of course, the charrette. Um, and then the commitment with investment efforts by BM Real Estate, Walsh and Granite. Uh, this has been a, a passion uh, project for many of these people here. So the event tonight, uh, I want to thank Bonnie McDonald for bringing this event to us, and it's great to partner as part of the Snapshot series and also part of our current project series here at the CAC. And, you know, this is a really daunting project because the scale of it is absolutely huge. And we're going to have to peel back the onion to see all the different elements that really have happened in order to save this building. And it's really been a community investment opportunity. You know, at um, CAC in 2014, uh, we actually took on this project with the county to look at doing a design charrette. So we worked with some wonderful partners from Cook County to MPC, Landmarks Illinois, at doing a design charrette. And this charrette really informed the process that then allowed the county to go forward and do a development bid of which we'll hear more from of John Murphy here this evening and it's wonderful to see all the action that's going on on the site that it's actually uh, for, come to fruition so now to talk a bit more and to share the mic that he so generously gave me is Tim Brangle who's president and CEO of the Chicago Consultant Studio and he's been a uh, over 30 years working on some very transformational projects in the city and actually around the country and his expertise in architecture, urban planning, strategic development and program management. And he was engaged by the county in 2014 to steer this project through. So I'll let him introduce the panel members. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lynn, and, and thank you for the introduction. I think, uh, as you said, you're going to hear that a lot tonight, uh, what a success this is, but it wasn't without a lot of great effort, and certainly uh, the efforts of Landmarks Illinois and, and uh, Chicago Architecture Center also, who uh, Lynn alluded to, participated in the charrette a number of years ago that really set up, uh, I think, a lot of the potential. Um, it's great to be in your new space. Congratulations, CAC. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting for you, I'm sure, and, and we're happy to be here as well. Um, to talk a little bit, um, apologies, I always like to, to start with a little agenda to give you a sense of what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, obviously, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, an overview of the project and the history, I think, to help set the table for a much broader discussion with uh, the various facets of uh, folks in front of us who, who represent the various uh, components of, of the project. Uh, we we'll get into a roundtable discussion um, with members from Cook County, from uh, Antunovich Associates, and, and uh, John Murphy from Murphy Development, talk about how this came to be. This didn't just happen overnight, as Lynn said, and, and saving this was a very conscious effort on many, many people's parts uh, to make it happen. We'd like to entertain a few questions and answers um, at the end, if time permitting, uh, and then we'll have concluding remarks from Bonnie McDonald uh, from Landmarks, Illinois. I'll jump right in. The, the, uh, this, as I said, didn't start uh, overnight, but to position this for those that don't know where Old Cook County is, I, I can't imagine you don't. It's a beautiful facade right off of 290, but it's about two, two miles from downtown um, and right at the heart of uh, on the Eisenhower, front and center, or right around Damon. Um, Interesting to note, the building we see today is actually the second building. This was actually the first one that came online in the 1880s. I raise this not because of the architecture, although we did lose this building, but to talk about the other context here. And for those that are Cubs fans, uh, this happened to be West Side grounds, and you can actually see the peaks of the old Cook County Hospital building behind it. So there's history here on many fronts, not only the great advances in medicine, but certainly uh, the uh, the uh, advances of the Cubs up until about, what was that, 1908, and now, now they've advanced. But 
we're here to talk about this building uh, and, and the context around Old Cook County. And I, I put this one first because I think it's important to talk about the aspirational aspects behind um, Old Cook County. Designed in 1914 by Paul Gerhardt, uh, he was the county architect. As an, and as an architect and urban planner, I like to think that counties have architects. That was a time perhaps when they valued design a little bit more than today. But it's nice to see that they had that. Paul designed this in a very different fashion than, than the time of, and the era. This was intended to be aspirational. It was designed in Beaux-Arts style, one of the only public hospitals uh, in this style, but to serve as an aspiration for all those that came through the doors. And it's sometimes referred to as the Chicago Statue of Liberty site because it was that beacon of hope, I think, and that beacon of, of, of social support, the things that were embodied in that institution. So it carries with it not only architectural prowess, but I think a very cultural and social significance, uh, not only to, uh, to Cook County, but certainly to the city and others. Um, and it has incredible architecture, particularly the outside and the facades that John will talk a little bit about, um, and a little bit on the interior. Some of these spaces are actually gonna come back to life, but you can see there was, there was effort, there was meaning behind these places and spaces and the, and the detail that went into the building. We see it today in a very different light. This actually is pre-Eisenhower, so um, you, know, it, you can see it was very much part of an urban context. Um, and actually, as we look at what evolved over time, uh, particularly with uh, Cook County and how this came to be. Part of it was about the land and assemblage of land. And here you can see there was no land. Actually, Pasture Park, which as we know today, this is old, old Cook County. Pasture Park is right here. You can see it was buildings. There was a street. Honorary came right down the middle and landed on the front door. So it was very much an urban district, and I think there are a lot of efforts now within the Illinois Medical District to go back to that. I think the context is important. But that became part of a, a very interesting part uh, to the solution of um, how uh, Old Cook County uh, came to be in terms of renovation. We advance a little bit farther. You see the campus growing. You see now Pasture Park in front, um, the start of the park in the front, and then other buildings. Polk Building is actually still there. Um, and this actually is now the site of current Stroger Hospital. We'll talk a little bit about that. But this evolved, and so this park came to be as well, which served almost as a beautiful forecourt. I will say it didn't quite get there. Um, you'll see in the next shot in 1940s, uh, the facade, you see some buildings lingering, but uh, the park is starting to form uh, and set a proper front door, if you will, to this building. And actually, interesting to note too, the, the sculpture there, the Louis Pasteur, um, and if you haven't seen it, it's a beautiful sculpture. Sculpture has a plaque on the back that has a wonderful reading, but that wasn't there originally. It was actually in Grant Park up until this time and moved over in, uh, in the 40s. But it's very fitting now, and I think a fitting front door and front uh, piece to the building. Fast forward a little bit, I like this, this clip from the Tribune that said, Curtains fall on, Cook, on Chicago's Cook County Hospital. This is the time when they transitioned, when Stroger was built, this new Stroger Hospital uh, in that location, and Old Cook County was abandoned. This building was slated to come down in the master plan, in all master plans, um, and, and uh, to open up land for some parking, for some open space, future expansion, but really um, you know, not a lot of talk about reuse. And that actually, I think, set an attitude for the years after that that perhaps led it to the condition it's in today, John Murphy, we'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, certainly there were no ideas at this time about preservation, except for a few folks in the room who will talk about that. And it started a charge, I think, um, uh, thanks to the great efforts of then LPCI, right, Landmarks Preservation Council, Illinois. Thank you for shortening that, shortening that to Landmarks, Illinois. It's much easier. Uh, at, and and uh, Joanne Tunovich, who is here, began a campaign. Um, also some, some famous folks, Studs Terkel, uh, petitions were uh, sent out, and a study done in 2003 that talked about reuse and how we could actually change this building and, and reuse it uh, in a meaningful way because it, it had meaning, it has purpose and it should stay. So thankfully the demolition stalled. We're gonna hear a little bit about that with, with Joe, but it, it, it then went into a period of about 10 years where there were more studies done and more planning, some of which done internally by the county uh, and others still uh, through landmarks and, and Joe's efforts. Um, 
many of them pointed to the fact that there really was no market viability with the building and that the uses, but for the county taking on a significant role in that building, there was no chance that this would be renovated or redeveloped. Um, uh, you know, we then uh, looked at that a little differently. Fast forward again to 2014, uh, when county under new leadership, I think, looked at this in a very different way um, and uh, thought that there was indeed more value here. They brought us in, we uh, worked on a team, we were the planner and sort of the strategic uh, development manager on behalf of the county, but they put the charge in front of us to not only um, deal with the core medical needs, because keep in mind this is still a medical campus. Uh, Stroger Hospital was very important, but those needs and that evolution of the hospital uh, was first and in, in uh, actually in the forefront of all of our thinking. But there was a sense that there was new value on the campus, that this building of Oak Hill County and the land around it could help spark a revitalization of the central, what's now known as the central campus. And then thirdly, really community build, city build, that this could be an impetus um, to, bring, to bring about additional development and change in the neighborhood. And I think as you look at this building, it certainly serves that purpose as a beacon and as a, as a gateway into a district um, uh, and, and has great potential when, those, uh, when that building is renovated uh, to change the district, to change the, the facade, if you will, of the entire district. So this is the campus. This is about 26 acres. As I mentioned, the yellow line there is Old Cook County, a behemoth of a building, 550 feet by 65 feet. Not quite the standards we designed to today. Very long and very narrow. And I think John will talk a little bit about that. But looking at the framework, it was first and foremost most important to us to look at it in context. And I think this is part of rethinking what Old Cook County could be. It was certainly part of the central campus. But more importantly, it was part of a bigger IMD, Illinois Medical District campus, and even more important, it was part of this whole movement of the west side, near west side, the activity across the Eisenhower. We think of that as a barrier, and indeed it is, but it certainly can participate in things happening like United Center, like all the restaurants on, on Randall Street, Fulton Market, and that movement actually, I think, lend a lot of credibility to the reuse potential of this building. So fast forward again, that led to us actually <coughs> dividing the site in two, preserving in red that area for Stroger and a future development and a future expansion, and the area in yellow now, Old Cook County, surrounded by land that could be developed. And this is one of the keys, I think, in rethinking uh, that process in Old Cook County on how we can actually get developer interest. Pairing it with land is usually a good idea. If you can make more than just one project out of it, I think that helps greatly. And so we started on our way, created an overall master plan. We didn't call it a master plan. It really is, again, a strategic plan focused on implementation, put forth kind of our conceptual look, and then decided to go into a testing period of sorts. And we called it the charrette challenge, and now kind of affectionately called the civic charrette where we looked at this building and put out our premise, if you will, the county's premise that there was value here and that there was potential. Uh, changed the story, if you will, of Old Cook County a bit and took it to, to uh, uh, the civic groups. And as Lynn mentioned, you know, we put forth again a, a variety of concepts, some of which actually looked at not just historic rehab, but infill and creative carving the building out like Foster did. And, and the Reichstag and other buildings. So we, we were open to a whole series of ideas, but this was intentionally um, uh, put out there to, to get industry input. We were gonna do a design competition, but we decided that let's invite the civic groups. Let's invite Lambda Alpha, who's known for land economics, Metropolitan Planning Council for the regional aspects, Central Area Committee for their focus on downtown, and then of course Landmarks Illinois and Preservation. Because in those groups are hundreds, if not thousands of experts and folks that are very much involved in the development industry. So again, a conscious effort to engage the masses, if you are, the, the, the civic leaders in, in the industry in this discussion and test the county's premise uh, of, for redevelopment. And we found a number of things out of that. It wasn't just, uh, you know, yeah, they, they came back, they did sort of validate, but it renewed an awareness and I think an interest in the overall potential. I think it validated and enhanced what we had been talking about. Nobody came back and said, you're crazy, that it's not possible. It built advocacy among these hundreds of 
people that participated who then marketed that potential out in the district and out in the, in the professional circles. And it really bolstered, I think, the developer selection process. We were able to take this body of work and put it into this request for a proposal or the solicitation for uh, developer interest. So with Jessica and the county, we issued an RFP, a request for proposal for development. And it wasn't uh, you know, really focused on unlock, unlocking this value, but changing the story, if you will, about the potential of Oakla County. And leveraging that input we had from the public charrette, promoting it nationally. Jessica went out to ULI, the Urban Land Institute in New York, and actually we advertised in some of their mag in the magazine that we have something uh, interesting here in Chicago that's worth looking at. And lo and behold, we got seven responses back, which in prior efforts under the county received very few. But we had seven very strong uh, proposals that came in. We shortlisted that and engaged in an interactive process with them. Again, I think a very creative process uh, with the county and selected civic health development group, CHDG, represented by John Murphy and Walsh and Granite uh, as, as the top um, um, proposer. And their plan was very much aligned, I think, with, with the county vision, which was encouraging, and they enhanced it. They took it farther. And I think you'll see here in their master plan, it really was focused on Old Cook County as a, a necessary and critical first phase. Uh, and then allowed a, a whole transformation of the district around it, development in Pasture Park, but creating a new usable park, development behind it, creating a new south entry, a new facade, a new parkway uh, to, old, to the campus, and areas around uh, the parking and the like. So you'll see a whole mixed-use transformative program that came out of this, bringing in much-needed development uh, into the district. The renderings were great. This is obviously pre-renovation. The building still had a little bit of dirt on it. But the idea of reinvigorating Pasture Park, the concept of a new building behind uh, Old Cook County and, and forming a new gateway and entry, wrapping some of the parking. And you see, again, restoring, if you will, a lot of this, uh, what I'll call the, the um, urban character and urban uh, opportunities and then recasting that front park and, and that wonderful facade, framing it with new development over time. And putting it all together into sort of comprehensive vision, really bringing this to a reality. Then John got into due diligence <laughs> and looked at the building. And while we saw some scars on the outside, it certainly uh, uh, was in bad shape. You remember the bands, some of them are still there. If not, they're on the Polk building. Um, but the inside was, was equally, if not worse, uh, uh, with uh, it, uh, deteriorating plaster and, and paint and the like. But if you could see through that, as John has and others, there is character, there's value uh, inside and out. Um, and I think that led really to a rethinking of the building. John thankfully continued the process. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There were hurdles to get there. But out of his due diligence, they decided to move forward and execute uh, a, an agreement at the 11th hour that we'll talk about. And Harrison Square was, was born. The rebirth, if you will, of Old Cook County now is as Harrison Square, um, positioning the building in its rightful position, cleaned, refurbished, uh, and ready for, for new use. The plan actually mirrored very similar to the county's plan, uh, as I said, in a series of phases uh, with the building uh, as the first phase and the park in front, development potential in the park, and then again wrapping around and forming really a, a much more of a strong urban context for Harrison Square for the building. Again, I mentioned it's a, a number of phases over time, but, um, and then interesting to talk about a little bit about Harrison Square and in the, in the ground floor of, of the, the old hospital building. Important to the county was this notion of activating the street, so uses such as retail, uh, and the like. John will talk a little bit about what's in the building, how it's been programmed, but it's important to activate, and you'll see some of these uses now uh, coming to, uh, to fruition, and in fact, a food hall is planned uh, in the space along uh, Wood Street, but really activating now that whole ground floor with retail, with hotel lobby, and the like. Um, the south facade was a bit of a, an, an anomaly in that it had five wings that, are, if you go back to that original picture, it had wings coming off of the back that were taken down over time and it left a rather difficult facade to deal with, some of which had some historic character, some of which it did not. 
Uh, and so there was a great effort put into it through John's team to create a new facade, uh, and we'll talk about that. And then a, a second phase that's, well, what they call it phase 1A, it's actually a part of the first phase, but the start of building in the, uh, the area behind Old Cook County and actually creating a, yet a, a, another door, if you will, South um, Avenue, if you will, South Entry into the overall uh, development. You'll see if you've been out there, the facade was covered for some time when they're starting to reveal what's there. And, and it very much matches the renderings that they've proposed, a clean, new, beautiful facade that actually looks a lot like it did in 1914, if not better. Uh, a new, uh, uh, clean uh, terracotta, a good portion of it has been saved. John will talk about that. And I mentioned the south facade, a bit uh, a tricky but uh, interesting way to integrate some new, again, new facade and a new entry for Cook County on the south, um, and uh, allowing that transparency of the building, and actually you'll be able to access it from north and south. And then changes on the interior. A lot of work here, you'll see the two-story atrium, which at one point was covered by the county and actually gone. Uh, now is being restored um, to its glory. It's one of the, the signature spaces of the building, I would say, and will, will be well served as a, as a lobby to the hotel. And also the corridor, uh, down the corridors, the plaster, all the detail um, that was in this building, particularly on the first and second floors, is coming back to life. So I'd like to pause there. That sort of lays the table, or if you will, sets the table for a discussion, uh, because it's, it's not just about pictures. It's really about, I think, a dialogue with the folks that actually made this happen. So I'd like to invite up uh, our panel to, uh, to, to talk a little bit more about some of the details and some of the experiences of this building. Uh, tonight, uh, we have Jessica Caffrey from Cook County. She's Bureau of Asset Management. Uh, you're welcome to come on up, Jessica. She uh, was extremely instrumental all the way through this process. We were side by side, uh, quite honestly, for, for many years from 2014 on, making this a, a reality. I like to call her, she, she's actually the director of real estate, and I always add, and development, because it is uh, somewhat unique. She is, is actually leading the development charge on behalf of the county. Joey Antunovich from Antunovich Associates, well known. Uh, around uh, this area for sure and all of his efforts in his architecture, both preservation, uh, but certainly new development as well. In fact, he was just in the paper today on Lincoln Commons, I think it was, some quotes from Joe. But Joe, as I mentioned, was very instrumental in, in helping stop the demolition. John Murphy from MB Real Estate and Murphy Development Group, uh, president and chairman of his group, he uh, had the the, the uh, I guess we'll say perseverance, but also uh, as a risk taker, uh, was willing to come on and take on this responsibility and the redevelopment um, uh, of Cook County. And then myself, they mentioned, uh, involved uh, with the county over um, the last uh, four years to help them on the overall management of the project. All right, you're probably tired of hearing me talk now. So, so actually, I want to start uh, with the most senior statesman here, and that's Joe Antunovich, who in and of itself is, is a landmark of sorts, not of age, but really an icon, I should say, for all of his effort uh, in the architectural world and certainly in the preservation world. But Joe, you're, you're no stranger to preservation, nor this group. Um, and your efforts in Cook County were really uh, begun probably in 2002, if not before, uh, with that potential threat, if you will, of demolition. Um, there were many studies. I want you to talk a little bit about that. How close did we get to demolition? I mean, it was, it was eminent. It was part of the plan. Yes. Is this working? Yeah. Oh. Um, it came so close. Um, to not having this meeting here at all. Um, in 2002, when the building was shuttered, <clears throat> um, then for the next year, uh, the county made it obvious that it was a different Cook County government at the time, Jessica. Correct. Uh, and um, they determined that it was costing $400,000 a year to maintain the building and um, they wanted to stop that bleeding, 
So the way they were going to stop that bleeding is to take the building down. What easier way to save $400,000? And so um, starting in 2002, almost right away, I was chairman of LPCI at the time, and David Bauman and uh, Jim Peters were very active with me. Um, I used to drive to the western suburbs and come back a lot, and that building just captivated me. And um, the more I read about it, it was really like our Ellis Island. And when you go back through, not just architectural, but when you go back through the history of hospitals in America, Cook County is one of the, the stalwart places um, in America for the history of, of hospitals. So many innovative things took place here and it was the number one spot for um, young medical doctors to come and do their residency. Right. And so um, I, I always looked at this building as our Ellis Island. I mean, if you talked about the Statue of Liberty, but <laughs> Co Old Cook County Semantics. Hospital turned nobody away. If you right. were sick, Old Cook County Hospital turned nobody away. And so when we found out that it was threatened with demolition, I was just appalled. And so uh, with my friends at LPCI, uh, we, we put together a redevelopment strategy. We, we only concentrated on the front of the building. The building was built in several phases, but the major, the major um, part was built in uh, 2000, uh, 2000, 1914, but then the wings were added on the back, and so our proposal from LPCI was to take the wings off, get rid of them, and save the old building. And so we started a process meeting with each of the 17 commissioners and President Stroger, and that was an interesting, that was an interesting <laughs> journey. Um, all 18 people, um, some of whom didn't want to listen to us, and some did. And it came down to a December 16th vote. And we went and we thought we had eight votes and there were nine against. And so, Right before the meeting, they pushed me into this office with Commissioner Steele. Remember Bobby Steele, who actually ended up becoming uh, president? And she said to me, she said, I know why you're here. Don't even bother. I'm voting against this because it's 400,000 that we don't have. And I said, oh my goodness. So I sat down, and she had this beautiful bookcase. And there were pictures of all these lovely, handsome young people. I said, are these your children? And she said, yes. She said, all seven of them. I said, really? She said, really? I said, um, were any of them born at Cook County Hospital? And she said, yes, five of them. Five of them were born there. I said, oh, that must have been wonderful. You know, in the rooms there and all of that. She said, rooms, she said. There were rooms. They wheeled us into these wards and we gave a birth and it was such a sense of community there and she was going on and on and she said, it was so wonderful. You were there and you really felt part of the community and, and all of a sudden she caught herself and she said, oh my goodness, I think you just got my vote. <laughs> the ninth vote. So it was 9-8, true story, true story. And uh, the two commissioners that were absolutely with us was Larry Sufferden, who's still the commissioner, right. yeah. and um, Carl Hansen. And there's a case, very unique, a Republican and a Democrat working together. Just imagine that, John. So uh, uh, they were, they were so supportive and they actually opened the door for us to meet with everyone. And then on December 16th, later in the day when we had 
the meeting to decide on the demolition or not. Um, David and myself got up and made a presentation on behalf of LPCI about the reuse of the building, taking down the wings, saving the building. Uh, perhaps you don't have to be renting all the office space that you're renting all over the place, which they were surprised that they right. were. And you know, you could go into this building and so they knew they didn't have that extra vote and so they tabled it. And they tabled it for a year and they tabled it for a two, but the longer they tabled it, more people actually came to support not demolishing the building. And then in, two, in, in, uh, nine, in 2016, no, oh, yes, 2006, the building was put on the National Register. Which um, with, helped um, greatly. With you, it's interesting you talk about civic leadership. I mean, I think that, that is a great story. And I mentioned, too, that, that uh, there was a change in leadership at the county and I think a change in attitude. And Jessica, you, you were there for that, uh, which was a significant piece, I think, of the equation to have somebody such as uh, President Preckwinkle who had a passion for preservation but also didn't know if this was worth keeping or not and said, well, let's explore this further. Talk a little bit about what changed at the county. What change do you think uh, that, that led to this? Uh, the process is pretty unique. What? So I, hi, Jessica Caffrey again from Cook County, Director is, of Real Estate. It's, oh, oh. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, All right, You can tell she's used to answering to the commissioners at the board. <laughs> they always have to introduce themselves if you ever watch those, but go ahead, sorry. Okay. So, um, hi everyone again. So yes, I think under the remarkable leadership of President Preckwinkle, she recognized the value in preserving this beautiful building. That's first and foremost. Um, what she did recognize is that she had the history of the reports as you showed, mm -hmm. that everyone said, you know what, there's nothing you can do with this building. As you guys saw some shots from the inside, it was completely just, it, the building was gone and then it was, all of the utilities were cut off. So that began to allow the building to deteriorate. So people said, there's nothing you can do with this. It's too expensive, it's not feasible. So the first thing that President Preckwinkle, President Preckwinkle wanted us to figure out is that, how do we approach this? You know, if all the studies that we have show that nothing can be done with this building, I recognize the importance of keeping it, what can we do? She said, okay, we have some other buildings that are on the campus that don't seem to have a, a good life they've expired their useful life. Um, can we add that as a part of the development offering? What can we do? How can we make this a public process? And how can we bring awareness to everyone? So looking at those few factors, she says, don't forget, let's meet the needs of the hospital. So to, re to reiterate kind of what Tim presented in the beginning is that, so what we did is we said, okay, let's meet the needs of the hospital first, and let's build them a new building. And I don't know if anyone has been at the site, but there was an old clinic building on the site previously named Fancy's Clinic. It looked like it was from a third world country, no offense. Um, and we were, people who needed free services were going there. We also had the nurses dorm, which was the Polk administration building that was there, in which we had office space. So she said, why don't we meet the needs of the hospital system first, because that's our mission and that's what we're here to do. And that's what we did. But simultaneously, let's look at that excess real estate. Let's look at those buildings that aren't used anymore, that are beyond their useful life. How can we add those to the development offering to make this a more attractive deal? So that's, the, that's what we did differently. We said, hey, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these additional buildings, this additional land on campus. We're gonna add not just the land, not just Old Cook County, but we're gonna look at the land in front of it, which is Pasture Park, which as we learned was neither a city or a county park, but it's actual developable land. We're gonna look at the land behind it, the land on the side of it, and now we have an actual development offering. Most importantly, let's have a public process. I wanna hear from the public on this. I wanna hear from the architects, the engineers, and everyone who's a part of this on what they believe how this could happen, hence the charrette. So we had a very open mm -hmm. public process and a great vision under her leadership that just changed yeah. the approach and um, how we looked at this at developing this particular property. Yeah, and I, yeah. I was always struck when we met initially and launched this project, uh, I mentioned before you talked about core medical needs and uh, unlocking the value, but the underlying premise was let's community build. And I think that's what this building did before and what this building can do again. Thankfully we had John, uh, uh, one of seven respondents to the RFP, the request for proposal, 
take up this challenge. And if uh, you know, John, you, you've done other preservation work, but, but this one's probably a little bit bigger, a little bit different, <laughs> maybe yeah. a little bit more complex. Yeah, lucky well, me. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. for full disclosure, we allowed him to walk through the building, so he knew what he was getting into. But tell us, what attracted you to, to, to the old Cook County Hospital building? Well, it's interesting. It came to me, uh, we saw the RFP, and I talked to the Walsh family, who had been partners of mine in other developments similar to this with the Chicago Motor Club. Oriental Theater Building, um, and a few others. And I have to be honest, you know, we did some research, and my father and my uncle did their surgical residencies at Cook County. My grandfather did his surgical residency here. And my great uncle, John B. Murphy, actually taught at Cook County in 1917. Oh, my goodness. So that, for me, gave kind of a, a more of a visceral attachment right, to it than right. I would normally, you know, <laughs> normally find. So I was, I was kind of a little more focused on this one than not, but I was shocked by the deterioration of the building. It was indeplorable. These pictures you're seeing are, are actually probably the best <laughs> of the worst. They were not you know? edited. <laughs> um, but you know, it's a, it's a very large building. It's, a, it's 350,000 feet. It's 550 feet long, but it's only 80 feet deep. And it's similar to a 50-story building laying on its side, okay, to kind of put it in perspective. So the mechanic, everything was gone. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's almost like serendipity. All these weird things happen over the last 25 years. Um, but the branches of the building that were taken off, the timing of the RFP, the buildup of the community, um, all of that fed into what created an opportunity to create a, a basically a financial model to take it on. Um, and so that, once we analyzed it in extreme detail, and I mean it took two years to really nail this thing down, uh, we made a commitment to the county to do it. And, and a big part of that commitment was the partnership we had with Cook County. This was a long-term 99, 99, 99 yeah, years. year lease. Um, so we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> um, but it was really their, their collaboration, their commitment, their support, uh, starting with Tony, who's always a phone call away if we ran into an obstacle or some hurdle that we didn't think we'd get over. Jessica has been fantastic uh, in her team in, in kind of helping us, you know, where and when we need support. Um, the community's been great. The outreach has been tremendous. We've gotten, you know, MBE, WBE participants uh, of all levels, Walter Burnett. I mean, it's just, it's just been a great collaboration of so many people. And that's why I kind of, in, in factors, that it's really more of a serendipity event that we have here to be able to take this on. So, right. um, as a start of it, I think that that was, yeah. you know, kind of... Uh, and I, I will say, I think there was certainly a groundswell of support and renewed interest that, that came out of this whole process. Um, case in point, that the response we get back from the, the RFPs, and I think you know, part of that was telling a different story. And I think that, that really does go back to, to the county's efforts and the, the leadership of uh, Tony Preckman. But what, what also is interesting, this is a very different project for Cook, uh, Cook County. Um, Bureau of Asset Management was, you know, they, in capital planning, they, in real estate, they manage their own properties. They manage the jails, the hospitals, warehouses, um, and, and the like. So development was not really in their vocabulary. So it, it sort of brought about a little different uh, approach to the project. How could they actually participate? Do they want to participate in what we call market rate development? That's sort of the other side, right? Rather, it's a little, little different to manage your own building. So it created, I think, um, a, a different model. Um, John, you alluded to the, the ground lease. It's a very different model for the county, a typical sale of a building or sale of the land, and you know, the, the county would be detached from it. But you talk about the collaborative spirit. I think it was a very intentional to, to approach it this way in a ground lease situation. Jessica, how, how did that come to be? I mean, I think the county, how was that different in your mind? And how has that fostered this collaboration now over the last, what you'd say, two, three years of, of evolution? Yeah, absolutely. So in the request for proposal document that we sent out, we know that we wanted some type of public-private partnership. We wanted to, to be able to 
um, not necessarily invest county dollars, but, but be able to benefit from having some a part of it. And Which, so, by the way, was in direct contrast to all the studies that said, but right. for the county subsidizing this, it isn't going to happen. So right. Very different. Yeah. And so this was such a success because we were we were able to get a development team to invest a possible over six hundred million dollars in this whole development, in multiple phases, without any money from the county. That's what we got from this RFP. That's how how responsive it was. Um, and again, the charrette helped with that by making the deal feasible. But the reason we went with the ground lease is because it still allowed us, the, the county, an opportunity to, to participate. So the development team still has to pay ground rent um, on the ground lease that they, they are on, but it's essentially their building. So the ground lease for 99 years is equivalent to a sale for any of the banks or anything like that due to the term. But we still wanted to participate. So the ground lease for us was the, the best option for us to participate. It still allowed us to achieve a lot of our goals that are important for the county. One of them being, as everyone knows, uh, President Preckwinkle is an advocate for affordable housing. So in our development agreement, and the development agreement is the agreement that we have between the county and the developer, we made sure there was a component for affordable housing in any phase that had residential. So 20% of the units needed to be affordable. That was very important, and that's how we were able to participate as well and, and have some say. We also wanted to make sure that there were minority and women-owned businesses that got to participate in the project. So again, the developer has done a great job at making sure for professional services, which are architects and engineers, and for construction services that there has been a participation by minority and women-owned firms. Last but not least is that this is definitely an economic development driver, right? So it was important for the people who live in the community, which is not a lot, to right. benefit from the, what's happening with this project. So what we did to achieve that is we said, hey, in our negotiations, and John know we went through negotiations a long time to anticipate every single scenario you could through a development agreement, which is to, it's, it's a very long for process. For 99 years. For 99 years. So you're going through every scenario um, trying to protect yourself. But uh, what we also did is that we said, you know what? We're going to draw a three-mile radius around this, this Oka County, and we want the people in the neighborhood to have the first right to some of the jobs that come here. So, that, so this ground lease that we have for 99 years, and while the developer has access to the ground for all of the different phases, we give the ground lease for that particular phase associated with each closing. So Old Cook County um, building and the land behind it is under the first ground lease. And then we'll re start receiving ground rent from that. And as they continue to move to other phases, we'll then transfer over the land to them um, uh, as we have, and they'll begin uh, participating in giving us ground rent for that. So it really was revenue generating, uh, economics, you know, development, right. and um, the effect that we would have on the neighborhood and the district. And, and you mentioned phases. John, yeah. this isn't going to happen overnight either, uh, but the yeah. first important phase is Old Cook County. That's happening. What, what's next? So, you know, uh, this first phase is about $135 million. Um, it's going to be comprised, you know, what we're putting in the building is going to be about 75,000 feet of office, which has been taken now. And um, we've got, obviously, the retail fully accounted for. And then we're going to have two hotels uh, in the building. One is a Hyatt house, one's a Hyatt place. You're going to be an integrated um, program so this building is hundred percent accounted for which is great um, from an economic perspective so this was like kind of the gating element to getting into the next phases of the building um, you know Jessica mentioned 600 million I think it's more like a billion billion one <laughs> that number fluctuates. Um, just what's a few hundred million bucks which, here and there but great. uh you know I, but I, I will tell you and I, I want to make reference to my partners the Lanigan family the Walsh's and um, the Leaf Mountain Fund, which you know we're all investors in, is that there is a tremendous amount of risk associated with taking on a building of this profile. And, and you all in this room can recognize that because we're all trying to save the historic profile and elements that are so important to the architecture and culture of Chicago. But this doesn't come without a lot of barb on it and a lot of risk. And, and for example, this building initially, we had a, uh, on the terracotta alone. That's, you know, if you don't know, it's the white stuff that kind of clads 
the building. There's only two companies in the entire country that still manufacture on a, on a mass scale, and one is Gladding McBean out in California. And we thought we had an issue with the terracotta. We thought we needed about 1,700 pieces. We're actually up to 4,155 pieces of terracotta that are being taken off the building, either replicated or restored and put back on the building. And that's why you're starting to see from the west going east the profile. It's a very clean, it's going to look, as I think, nicer than it did because of air pollution and the elements back in 1913. This building will look better than Gerhard ever even thought it would. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's a resource thing. But uh, going forward, you know, it's, <laughs> it's always a push-pull. You know, we're going through something right now with the ARO and the Affordable Housing Act in Chicago that makes it very challenging for developers to develop because there's such a high level of qualifications you have to hit. And the expense of new construction conflicts with that. And so you're seeing a big slowdown in affordable housing production. I think that's a temporary state. I think they're working very hard to you know, revise that criteria. And I think you're going to see that change probably in the months ahead, which will prove to be very positive for not only this site, but also right. the city of Chicago. The Illinois Medical District is the most robust, busiest medical district in America. We have about 55,000 visitors every day come to the IMD. Yeah, it's staggering. Um, which is, Huge number. It's, it's really phenomenal. Um, this building, this old Cook County building, Harrison Square is the epicenter of the entire Illinois Medical District. So we are getting calls from Biomed, from, you know, you name it. They're all kind of swarming around trying to figure out what it's going to be, the quality of finish, because they're skeptics. They saw the condition of the building, how it deteriorated over time, but until they see the end product and the quality of it, it's hard for a major international company to commit two, 300,000 feet at a time to this site in this location. But it's coming because we're starting to hear about it already. Um, the housing side, I think we're going to go ahead somehow and figure out how to make this next phase work with 200 units and, and within the criteria of the affordable housing uh, rules today. And that'll just, you know, that'll be another phase. But I think, you know, look, in 10 years, God willing, we're all around, um, I think they will all look back on this and, and really take a lot of pride in not only what it represents to the city of Chicago, but also you know, to the country right. as to how public-private partnerships can work very effectively. Uh, it's, it's a great model and a great precedent. And I think, you know, again, going back, Joe, to, to your vision back in 2002, standing there, chaining yourself to the building of the commissioner's desk as you did, <laughs> or sweet-talking uh, Commissioner Steele as you, you, you did, it was, was, was wonderful. But critical to this, too, what I always appreciate about Joe and, and Landmarks is, when we did the charrette process, they always came back and looked at the building only. And, and part of, I think, unlocking the value of this whole, the whole thing was putting the land together with it that allows John to not only build, work on this building, which is a big cost and big risk, but also then to build new development. I assume you'd probably rather do new buildings. It's gonna be a little bit easier it's for you. a lot you, easier. Uh, in those Trust future me. phases. But, but Joe, the, the, the integral to that was the financing of the historic tax credits, which were so important. Talk a little bit about that, the federal historic tax credits, and now we actually have a new state historic tax credits. Great, great effort on Bonnie's uh, part and, and Joe's and Landmarks Illinois to create this new this year. So how did you, how did you work it out in your original studies? And, and John, maybe you could talk a little bit about sure. how that translated wow. in the uh, uh, recently. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting that as we got into looking at the, uh, the building, what was even more fascinating was the urban design nature of the undeveloped site. As great as Pasteur Park was, I think if you saw three people there right. per day, Completely you'd be exaggerating it. And, <laughs> and it was not very inviting. And when you go back historically, it was covered in buildings, right. a very, very urban site. 
But when you look at the, the you, know, you look at Rush and the University of Illinois Medical Center and you look at Cook County Hospital, what a tremendous energy generator, job generator for the city of Chicago. And you know, there's three shifts going on there and they'll keep going on there forever. What an energy generator. And so I've got to compliment John because this is really the, the, the victory here is, an, is the building is fantastic, but the victory here is an urban design victory. And you're setting up with this as almost the fulcrum, the future development, people coming in, the biomed companies, I hope that all of the people that are working there can actually sleep here and actually have an apartment or a condominium and look at what's happening across the street. Now that's all made possible on this building by the federal tax credits, by the, um, by the state tax credits which have been put in place. Um, the wonderful thing about the class L where you can actually hold um, <laughs> hold the, the, the land taxes um, um, in abeyance for, I think it's 10 years, John, and, yeah, and then, mm -hmm. uh, then incrementally catch up, but yeah. that allows you to get funding initially, which is super, super critical to lenders. Yeah, um, it, it is, and, and you know, the, the challenge is that the current administration has revised you know, the criteria by which you qualify for the tax credits. And so you're constantly, at least we had to hit certain deadlines. And again, the county could not be more accommodating to respond to us, to sign off on various elements and documentation we needed to convey to the National Park Services to qualify for the level of tax credits we got. The Illinois, what, what Bonnie's done is tremendous. But trust me, this is one where you need every single dollar available. Yeah. And, and it's, it's it's what those programs were designed to address and be committed to. Um, and so, but it's, and, and, and it's, it's unfortunate because I think that that program has eroded dramatically in the last 24 months. Um, the economy of it is collapsing. You know, we did a project at 100 West Monroe and we got a tax credit there and we were selling tax credits for a buck 33. Um, today you can't get 82 cents for that. And I know that sounds, you know, kind of a, a weird me uh, metric, but um, it's, it's fallen down considerably. So buildings like this going forward will suffer because there's not adequate subsidy to address the renovation costs and therefore they will be basically shelved or zombied for the foreseeable future. Infeasible. And I think it's interesting because the tax reform actually at one point threatened the historic tax credits. They were going away right. altogether. And that actually, yeah. Jessica, that caused a little bit of hard turn, a little bit of impetus. We were working through, what was it, December 29th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so, so what happened is that we were in fear that the laws would change regarding the tax credits. And we knew that that was a big source of financing for the development team. So in our, in our original negotiations, we basically transfer, we ground lease the land once they're ready to have a financial close and not before. And that provided a protection for the county because what that does is saying, okay, we're not just giving a developer our land that's not ready to be built on, right? So you get our land once you have all your financing together. But due to the threat of the tax credit laws changing for the historic tax credits, we had to get creative. And I think that it was a very creative uh, uh, part of the county. And uh, what we did was we, uh, executed the ground lease in advance to show that he had site control, the development team had site control on the land, so they would be eligible for the tax credits under the old laws in the event that they did change. Uh, we still had all of our mandatory um, closing requirements, but that was one of the creative ideas that we did to make sure, uh, to ensure the success of the project. Yeah, and yeah, literally close on the last day you could, right? Right, to, on the last day we could. To, yeah, to at least right. grandfathered yeah. under the prior tax right. law, and thankfully that, that moved forward. The laws changed a little bit, and as you say, they're, they're not nearly the same as effective as they were. Right. But let's talk a little bit about the takeaways, because I think, you know, we, we've kind of given, I think, a hint of a lot of steps, a lot of incremental pieces that came together to make this happen. Um, and it didn't happen, if any of these little pieces didn't happen, it probably wouldn't have happened. So, so we're, you know, 
Jessica, it's different for the county. What, I mean, in your mind now, what do you see happening? What, what are your takeaways? What do you appreciate out of what John's doing and what do you see as the future of, you know, for the county? Absolutely, so turning on the lights to Old Cook County turned on the lights to this district, this Illinois Medical District. This Illinois Medical District has 30,000 employees, over 30, close to 40, and over 50,000 visitors a day, and it's not a place to get coffee. Now they're building up. I mean, it's now Starbucks is coming up on 2020 Ogden, but this, this particular building really turned those lights on. It, it's basically activating Harrison Street, it's activating Wood Street, and it's activating that whole entire district, what we're doing here. So I think that this is a huge change um, for the Illinois Medical District, and I think that we're the center of the Illinois Medical District, and turning these lights on turns the lights on to the district. I agree completely. Yeah. Joe, 2002 and before, how does it feel for you and the success of this and the, the pending uh, renovation and opening in what, John, 20, what are we looking at, what date? No, it's, it's, uh, it's out there. <laughs> but, well, I, I think this is just, this is a great example of a, a, a public-private um, venture um, that's, that's to be celebrated. I'm so proud to be up here with you, um, to be here almost 20 years after we started the fight chaining ourselves to the doors of the old Cook County <laughs> Hospital. Um, but, but I think, you know, now, the Cook, now Cook County might start thinking, gee, we might have some other buildings that we have around town that maybe, maybe it's better that we should enter into similar partnerships. And I think that once, once this is successful, um, heck, Cook County owns a lot of buildings and, and, and they're, the last thing they should be doing is owning buildings and operating buildings. They should be in partnerships like this that, and, and that, again, that, I, that are. And that's a great point. And I think yeah. that because of this, we are looking at that. We're looking at our campuses with a more holistic view yeah. versus, um, oh, this is a capital project. This is the facilities condition assessment. Oh, we need to repair this, repair this. But the facilities are outdated. So how do we look at campuses and how do we look at groups of buildings holistically to come up with a plan that works? Because so you, you, you yeah. might have a, a building that's a storage building or an office building somewhere and it's got some open land where a developer could get involved and. And you could, you could not only bring it back as perhaps office space, but you could also build residential. And what better thing to do than provide the residential where people are working so you don't have to feed the gasoline in the cars and have people traveling forever. So being able to live very close to where you work is critical. And I think you've got lots of examples. Yeah, I think that's a great point. This is a model process, I think, and a, a shift, if you will, for the county now getting into sort of rethinking how they, they look at development and their assets and putting assets to good use. As Jessica said, this is, this is now gonna, John, John is gonna be paying rent on this <laughs> and it's gonna accrue to the county's benefit, whereas before they were gonna be paying millions to take it down, so a real success. John, is this your, your favorite project, your best? <laughs> Where does it rank in your, in your preservation it's, it's portfolio? Been, it's definitely yeah. been the most fun, right? I'm, I honestly, I'm humbled and, and, yeah. and it's some level of honor to um, be part of it. Um, like I said, it's, it's this weird serendipity that, that takes place where this can happen at this point in time in my career. Um, and I'm thankful for the opportunity, and I hope that you know we do as good a job and, and stand up to the reputation we have um, and we'll maintain going forward, and it'll be a, a fixture for the community and, and the city for, for many, many years to come. Tim, um, I, I was on one of the other teams that was not successful. <laughs> so listening to this, listening to John tonight now, I can see what we were competing against. So here's a, a South Side Irish boy comes in for the interview and he says, oh, my father, he was in residency here. That's right. And not only that, my grandfather. You must have had a glass to the door. My grandfather was, I, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Had, had we been It was over in the first 10 minutes. And you know, I would have said, forget it, don't yeah. even bother. That's not part of the evaluation criteria, That's right. by the way. <laughs> Joe, you might, want to, right. you might want to give him your card. Yeah. <laughs> Get on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna open it up now. Uh, I think to uh, to the, oh, oh, hey, we got a we couple got some questions. questions open it up to the public. Thank you, panel.
they have some microphones and be happy to pass around and answer or, or at least try to answer your question. Yeah, question Very good. I think this is it working. I think this is a question for Mr. Murphy. Uh, one of the slides said that the average apartment was going to be 540 some square feet. Yes. If that's the average size, then there's got to be a lot smaller than that. Who do you see? I mean, that's a small apartment. Yeah, so these are, uh, these are serving residents of both Rush, Cook County, as well as the University of Illinois and a lot of nursing students. So this is about as close to a, almost like a, a student housing uh, facility like a dorm room is you'll find. Of. So you will see a lower, and in fact, we're dialing it even tighter now to try and trim down costs to make it kind of work within the context of the affordable housing model. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, this is wonderful. I was wondering what you're gonna be doing to celebrate the history of Cook County Hospital. I saw some slide that talked about yeah. the history, but I mean these stories, I had friends that worked here forever mm -hmm. and they told me stories and hearing yeah. these stories. We, uh, I, I no, um, there is a tremendous tale of history uh, surrounding this facility. Um, I get calls every week, whether it's doctors, nurses, teachers, you name it, across the board. So what we're going to do is have a museum that wasn't highlighted in this program, but on the first floor, uh, adjacent to the retail and the food hall, that's going to highlight the history of not only the building, but the medical culture that's evolved and developed here right. over the last 125 years. So we, we, we understand that, recognize it, embrace it. This is a fabulous project, and I haven't really looked at this closely, but after tonight, it makes me want to take a trip down there and take a closer look. Yeah, be careful. But what I was, could you just give us sort of a high level overview of the phases, one, two, three, four, whatever they are, and yeah. what's in those phases and some kind of timing, maybe? Well, you know, our perspective is kind of eight to 10 years currently. So we're doing this and we'll probably kick off the next phase, the residential piece in the next few months. It's fully financed, pretty much ready to go. Um, the rest of it, the Hectone Durant building will be demolished probably in the next year, and, and then we'll have a, a really solid site uh, for a significant medical office building, probably in the half million to 700,000 foot range, 25 to 30 stories. But then we'll migrate over to, because what we're trying to do is build a critical mass and as that population dynamic expands, it becomes more of an attractive site for others to migrate to. And that's when you get the larger scale, you know, whether it's multifamily, residential, or office. We haven't really committed one or the other, but we have the ability to do almost three million feet here um, based on some revisions that are being made to PD30. And, and um, so we've got, we got plenty of time, but we're very patient too. We don't, in, in the, the, the structure of the lease, the phasing of the leasing allows for that. As long as we kind of keep pace every year or two and advance the project, um, I think we'll be fine. And, and so far, we're, we're on track with, with everything. You know, there's a liner building that goes around the parking lot. That is, you know, that's a smaller project. It'll probably be fit in the sequencing of the other larger ones. But what you do, when you're doing larger scale projects like that, you develop an efficiency, like an economy of scale with the number of people working there. Right now we've got about 340 people working on site, laborers, and you know, we wanna get the next phase going as fast as possible to utilize you know, the labor that's in place. So it's um, a lot of coordination, a lot of logistic um, issues, but nothing that can't you know, we can't address. Um, so. And just to add to that, I think the first, in our development agreement and negotiation, we wanted Oak Cook County to be first because we knew that that was the hardest phase. 
And after that, you know, we allow flexibility for the other phases, which will include right. medical office, a residential tower, you know, maybe another office tower or something like that, and some other retail. And I think it's got to be the, yeah. other, the other key throughout this process, you talk about collaboration, is facilitating and, and being flexible as well. And I think part of this in the redevelopment agreement that came out of this whole process is flexible to allow the market to sort of dictate as well. Um, so I think you'll see, and this is John quite committing because I don't think, you know, I mean, there's certain things, there's certain needs in the, in mm -hmm. the district, but they're, they change. And, and it's very flexible the way it was written to allow for it to respond to market, but it eventually has to be built in some fashion. So you will see uh, this plan that's there in some iteration, uh, very conscious effort again to, to pro prescribe those steps uh, so that, that, uh, that what was promised will be delivered eventually. But again, it, it is a collaboration to get there. Good evening. This has been absolutely amazing. Um, I, I know a little bit about uh, the project. I had the pleasure of serving on one of the teams during right. the charrette, but and I never knew these personal stories. So Joe and John, um, that's amazing. Joe, sorry you came up short on the response, but nobody's <laughs> going to forget the fact that you got the key vote, um, which is amazing. Sure. And I, you know, I always tell my clients not to get um, emotional about real estate, but these stories tell me that without that emotion, this wouldn't happen. So I think that's yeah, amazing. That's true. Um, I am curious as much coordination um, has obviously gone into this and continues to go into this. We haven't heard much about coordination with the city of Chicago. I would be interested in maybe hearing from Jessica or others about um, the underlying zoning, because I know that was certainly a component of this with an underlying plan development zoning. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe um, coordination and kind of um, what you see happening with coordinating with CTA and opportunities for public transit and kind of um, tying all that into the redevelopment. Yeah, so I can address the zoning question. So yeah, the Cook County worked um, uh, definitely with the, with the City of Department, Department of Planning and Development, DPD, right? Okay, mm -hmm. now, it's DPD now, okay. Um, again, uh, to work through the zoning. One of the zoning approvals that we needed was for the hotel. So basically, PD 30, um, the language in plan, there, plan development, plan 30. development 30, which is the plan development in which this uh, site is located in, basically says any other uses that basically complement or uh, Old Cook County Hospital that are essential for medical. So what we were be able to argue for the hotel use is that there was some benefit for the um, people who were staying at Rush or Stroger to use the hotel rooms for family members of, of that nature. So that was approved. So we did work through the city for those type of zoning changes. We are working right now um, on the PD30. Right now the IMD is in process of updating their PD30. So we've asked for more floor area ratio. That's how much we can build. Density, density the density on the site. Uh, so we've asked for that and that'll be another change for us. But um, as far as uses are concerned, uh, the residential you know, was already included because there used to be a nurse's dorm on the site. So that was pretty good. Um, we just recently just had to get the approval for the daycare and for the hotel, but those were approved by the Department of Planning and Development. And that, and that was the opportunity we saw in it. It yeah. was, you know, there was just so many different uses and opportunities within the context of the allowable area to build that, you know, inevitably you're going to find users. Um, and that was a big risk mitigant, you know, for us in looking at it. And I, I think that even in the beginning, before uh, the development uh, developers came on board, the, the county and our team, we met with DPD probably at least three, four times to talk about this project so they knew it was coming. Um, obviously, they embraced the idea of renovating the building. I think we had a number of folks, uh, Eleanor Gorski and others, that were very excited about that. Um, but we, we also did it consciously to help, I think, facilitate it. Going back to that, this was a different process uh, for the county. It really helped. Uh, push this development forward and make it easier, if you will, to take away some of that risk by, by meeting with the stakeholders, by meeting with the city ahead of time and sort of laying a path, if you will, for, for the development. I think that helped greatly in now the subsequent phases as we come through and actually come back with real plans. Yeah, and it, you know, getting back to the transit side, you know, look, yeah. we, we've got it all right there. Right. It's, you know, pink line, uh, green line, the, the, you know, the, the Bus routes, everything, it's yeah. all Greens. in place, well, Greens. fully functional and only to be enhanced. There have been discussions about resetting the, um, the platform on, on the Eisenhower there and as well even bridging over uh, the expressway and connecting, you know, that which is a, a more grand plan, but uh, 
We'll see what happens. But, but from a transportation perspective, it's it's outstanding. Well, and you've got Di Ogden on the diagonal, right. which connects all straight, the way yep. down to Holden the communities Market. of Midway and all. Right. And let's not forget the bus service. I, I think mm -hmm. the bus service is a forgotten, yeah, no, it's great. a forgotten gem of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so many of the nurses, so many of the people that work in the hospitals ride the bus. And these bus lines are very, very important. And so the way in which they come together at the, at the hospital and at the medical center here is Take critical. Access. And, and I, that's why I say, I think from an urban design standpoint, this, this all, it it, it, yeah. it, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful song. And they actually just put, I think, 23 and a half million into the blue line stop right there at Damon. Um, and as John alluded, there, there were plans, still plans, I think, about discussion of creating development opportunity across bridging 290 and sort of getting rid of that chasm and actually, you know, bringing to fruition that diagram that says it's as much a part of, of everything to the north United Center. I think, you know, we'll still hold on to that. I think there's still some studies out there and I think there's a lot of interest in doing that. That's one of those projects that may come out of it. Okay, we have Good. time for two more questions, and then uh, Bonnie will give closing remarks. Um, it's a very exciting project, but my heart sank every time I saw the uh, rendering with the two new buildings in front of the hospital, so that from the, it looks like from the highway you will barely see the hospital. Are those a firm part of the plan? I'm sorry, what was from the, the, is that? Is it part of the plan? Let me step back. Part of it too, I think we alluded to, the park today sort of bleeds out. It has the heliport on one side that's now uh, vacated and, and rush on the other. The thought was we're not going to build in the whole thing and the, the strategic plan that the county put together, we worked on actually did, you know, was to preserve some of that space and make it usable space. I think tied to that though, in order to do that, make it much more enlivened, is development. And so the idea of flanking and creating a new park that still preserves a forecourt of sorts to the building is critical. And I, I think John's plan recognizes that. Mm -hmm. um, some of the preliminary uh, renderings may have shown maybe the view is a little bit off, but the intention is actually still to keep some space there, keep it as a forecourt because you're putting yeah, a lot of, of money. Frame to frame, to frame the old it. building. That's right. really the idea. I think there was a question right here. The young man in the green, oh. Teal. Can you tell us about the murals in what seems to be the front entrance? The murals? There are some murals in the, uh, that are in the lobby currently that we're going to preserve. Um, we just don't know their positioning just yet, but all the ornamentation around the atrium is, is going to be fully restored uh, to its original condition, um, if not replicated. Uh, no, th these are actually, th th these murals were done back in the 30s, some of them, and th those are the ones that we're going to try and keep. I think some of them are trying to keep. Yeah. Mandated that they stay right. um, in, the, in the facility. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I believe some of them were lost uh, when they capped the atrium. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you saw some of those, some of those were lost when the, they capped the atrium space to get more space for the hospital a long time ago, and thankfully, we're restoring the space. I don't think you found all of them, but there are some left. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're going to conclude the question and answer. I'd like to introduce Bonnie McDonald from Landmarks, Illinois. Hey, good evening. Good evening, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here just because seeing what this building has become is incredible. How many of you have passed by? I-90 and seen the reveal of the small portion of the cleaning. Isn't it fantastic? So give a round of applause, please, to John Murphy. He and his team are truly visionaries to see the potential of this building and to give us back this incredible landmark, uh, a landmark of the people, as Joe had said. So tonight, I just want to give a few more thank yous. I want to thank uh, the Chicago Architecture Center. I know Lynn had to step out, but to Lynn and all of her staff for this partnership. Uh, Tim Brangle and, and I and Maria Rich on my team who works on our Snapshots lectures have been working on this panel for about 18 months 
And we are happy to be here. So uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you, CAC, for having us, and to Maria Rich on my staff for making this possible. We wouldn't be here without uh, President Tony Preckwinkle, who could not be with us tonight. Jessica, thank you for uh, your team's work in the patient and ardent uh, uh, progress that you made. We don't know how many hours you have spent on this, but I'm sure more than we will ever know. A lot. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, to, to my dear pal Joe, right here. A board member of Landmarks Illinois. I also uh, know that we have several board members, Kathy Swain, I can see as well, that without the patient support of our board members, and my name has been bantered about tonight, but this, this is a project that has taken uh, dozens, if not hundreds of people who have advocated for Landmarks Illinois. I'd like to recognize Lisa DiChiara, our director of advocacy over here, who... <laughs> Um, I've been at this for seven years. Uh, Lisa and Joe have been at it for 20. Uh, Landmarks <laughs> Illinois has worked on this project for over 20 years, and we are so proud of what has come from it, so thank you. I also want to recognize a partner of ours, because it's not just it's not just Landmarks Illinois as an advocacy organization, but Jonathan Fine is in the room, the former executive director of Preservation Chicago, who was with us along the way. So thank you to Jonathan. And we've already celebrated John Murphy, but I just want to say how, how impressive it was to us, his team's work, uh, to do what they have done and to take on a project that is really monumental. So we just want to thank them and have actually recognized John and Joe for their vision with our legendary Landmarks uh, Awards in the past. And I just want to close by, by saying how this has shown us what is really possible. How, how many times have we heard something is too far gone? Isn't that, we hear it so many times and we have heard it over and over again about this building. Sorry, John, you have set a new bar for how bad something <laughs> can get yeah, yeah. Uh, for too far gone. Uh, so many of us had a vision for what this could be, but it's really hard for the development community, for the, really the average person to see what something can become. And I think this is indicative of what can be done. So you, everybody in this room, can be that advocate to use this as an example for those people who are telling you that neighborhood, that neighborhood place that you love, or your, you know, the place where you, you were born, uh, something important to you is too far gone. You can use this as an example of what can be done with perseverance, with leadership, and with vision. I think it also tells us the lesson of preservation is incremental perseverance. You know, for every, every noted uh, success behind this were uh, many, many opportunities where this could have uh, burned and fallen into the flames. Uh, this was really about being in the right place at the right time, having the right people at the table to talk. And so that again is where each and every one of you can play a part in preservation by being the, uh, the advocate in your local community, by being members of CAC and Landmarks Illinois, uh, by joining us in having a voice for the places that you care about, because we needed to be the voice for this, but you equally can be a voice for the places that you care about. Uh, I also want to say that what we learned, you know, support the developers who are doing great work like this. Sometimes developers are mentioned with a scowl um, that they're not doing great work, and it's important to note that there are developers doing great things in this city, and it's important for us to, to celebrate them too, so please do that. Uh, at any one time, Landmarks Illinois, which is the statewide advocacy organization, has 120 of these projects like Cook County going on at any one time. Uh, so I just want to say for the incredible work that's done by, by my team, by the board of directors, uh, we hope that you will support us in this work by, for example, coming to the Snapshots lectures, learning about what we're doing. Go to our website and learn about these places. They might be in your hometown. They might be where you were born, for example. Uh, so be that advocate. Uh, you, we have a free e-newsletter where you can learn more about these places. And of course, you can join us as a member, and I, I hope that you will. So thank you for coming this evening and hearing about this incredible progress, and we hope that you will all, when this is done, John, in 2022. <laughs>
Well, this will be done in about 10 months. 10 months. So we'll phase. be in 2021. So. Go to that coffee shop. Go yeah. to the museum. I'm looking. Uh, Bob Reamer, who has been an incredible advocate for the museum, worked at the county. <laughs> Uh, go and see that museum, um, populate it, use it, and uh, and show that it was all worthwhile, that it did indeed unlock the value. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we hope you'll come back again. <laughs>